Places. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Shlomo Steinman. I think he deserves a round of applause for all the hard work he does with organizing uh, the JBD. And I want to thank everyone involved with JBD. Trust me, I'll keep it brief. I'm in a small rush. I have to go to a friend's wedding. But Bezat Hashem, hopefully we'll all be able to uh, enjoy. Uh, he told me you better come on time. I saw you advertise. If you're not going to be here, I'm going to be like, okay. Anyways, the, as advertised, the topic I'll be speaking about is the power of the mind and how it affects our life, business, etc. We actually see this topic mentioned in this past week's parasha, this past week's Torah portion of Shilach. We see that uh, the Jewish people sent spies to the land of Israel to give back a report. And we all know what happens, obviously. But what's very interesting is that when the spies came back, the pasuk, the verse says, that uh, they said the following, that we felt like we were grasshoppers in our eyes, and so we were in their eyes. If you take close attention to what I just said, and to what the, the pasuk says, you'll learn an amazing lesson. Once again, the verse says that they felt that they were like grasshoppers, meaning they felt like they were nothings in their own eyes. Only then did they feel like grasshoppers in their eyes, meaning the enemies. And the commentaries tell us something unbelievable. That what a person perceives of, his, of himself is what others will perceive of him. That's a powerful lesson. That is unbelievable. What we think of ourselves is what others will think of us. And let's take this to another step. Whenever the Torah speaks about happiness, the word that is usually used is besimcha. So the famous question is, why does it have to use besimcha, which means with happiness? Why can't you use the word simcha or sameach? For example, why does it have to say ivdu et Hashem besimcha? Or mitzvah gedola liyot besimcha? Or there's another verse, it doesn't matter the translation, the idea is that uh, So the famous question is why is it that we always use and they always say the word why not use a different form? And the reason why the lesson is unbelievable. God wanted to teach us the secret of how to become I know there's a few Israelis over here so they could appreciate it a little bit more. But what's the secret of becoming besimcha? What's the secret of happiness? And the secret of happiness is very simple. If you take the word besimcha and you play around with it, you move the letters around a little bit, what do you get? You get the word machshava. What does the word machshava mean? Your mind, your thoughts. And the Chachamim tell us, the rabbis tell us very simply that if a person tells himself, if he uses his mind, he uses his thoughts and says, everything is for the best. No matter what situation I'm in, no matter what the situation is with my business, with my family, if you have your mind and you put it on the positive mode, then you will always be happy. Well, Rabbi ladies and gentlemen, we have to keep that in mind. That's the only way we're going to always be happy. Keep in mind the famous saying, what's the famous saying? Adam shetamid sameach, tamid matzliach. A person that is always happy is always successful. Let's take this even one more step forward. And Be'ezot Hashem, that will be the end of my long speech. <laughs> we all know the famous incident of Yosef HaTzadik. Unfortunately, he was taken away from his father and his family because of his own brothers who tried killing him. Then he was sold to a foreign land where he was all by himself. And on top of all that, what happens is that he gets put in jail on false, false charges because of Potiphar's wife, right? And keep in mind, I want to tell you, I want to remind you that he was a 17-year-old child. So I ask. How in the world did a 17-year-old child like him not lose his mind? How did he not become crazy? And the funny thing is that when he was in jail and the baker and butler were also put in jail, he sees the bakers and butler, butler enter the jail and he asks them, Lama panechem ra'im? Why are your faces sad? Why are you guys sour? Basically, he's asking them, why aren't you happy? Come on, Yosef. They're in jail. Jail, which is not like nowadays where you have television and you have three meals and everything. It was basically a rat hole. How could Yosef Atzadik ask these guys, why aren't you happy? 
And ladies and gentlemen, we all know what the answer is. It's very simple. Yosef had the power of the mind. He controlled himself. He told himself that any moment I'm going to get out of this rat hole, out of this jail, it's going to be any day. And he had the positivity. And that's what kept him from day one to day two to the next day until eventually what happens is not only does he get out of the jail, but he becomes the second most powerful person in the entire country. And that's the power of the mind. It has the ability to affect your life, to affect your business, to affect your family, to affect your relationships. That, that, that. You fill in the blank to whatever your heart desires. That is the power of the mind. And this concept of the power of the mind is also scientifically proven with studies that show that 10 people that have the same certain uh, headache or disease, whatever it is, and they give five people serious, the real dosages of medicine, and they give the other five people a candy, a sugar pill, better known as placebo. And we know what's the, 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 the effect of the study. The effect of the study is that all 10 people become healthy. Because in their mind, oh, they took something, so it must be that they feel better. And Morara Watai, keep in mind, in the way a person chooses to go, they assist him. Do we have the power tonight to be positive, which will make us happy? And that, in essence, will definitely make us successful. Thank you very much for listening, and thank you very much for coming.